So in order to build the form, we're going to need to augment a couple of the other HTML pages to start with. On the website, on the Contact Us page, we currently have this little tab that says Save a Turtle Today, Learn How You Can Help. When you click this now, it actually launches an email program and is a mail to link. We're going to change this link so it actually goes to a new page and we're going to create a new page which is going to contain our form. This is going to be the save the turtle page so this page is going to actually contain our form. So let's just change this link and then let's go about creating the skeleton for that save page. Back in my editor I have the contact us page open and currently here is the link tab for the Save the Turtle tab. So instead of having this go to a link, as I mentioned, we're just going to have this go to a page called save.html. And currently this page doesn't exist, but we'll be building this page shortly. So I'm going to save the Contact Us page. And then for the Save page, I'm going to actually base this page off of my Turtle 2 page. And the reason that I chose to do it off of Turtle 2 is because Turtle 2 is just a pretty plain page. It doesn't have a lot of other stuff on it. So I'm going to use this page as my starting point. So I have my Turtle 2 page open. I'm going to do a Save As. And I'll just go ahead and save this in the pages directory and we're just going to change the name to save.html. And then I will quickly just have the title say save the turtles, help now. And we're going to augment some of the internal parts of this page so that this page works a little bit differently. For the page that we're going to be building, instead of having a two column layout as the page currently exists, we're going to actually just be building out one column. So I'm going to get rid of some of the code that I don't want and I'll keep the items that I do want to keep on this page. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to get rid of the aside. We don't need that anymore. I'm also going to get rid of the article tag right here. So this is where the article ends. I'm going to get rid of that whole thing. And we're just going to build our new page within the interior content section. So I'll change this H1 so it just says save a turtle today. And now we are almost ready to start building the form. I think I'll include an H3 that just explains a little bit more about what's going on this page. It's just going to say you can help sponsor a turtle and make a difference. And then we'll begin by building the form. And I think what I'll do is I'll just make a HTML comment that just designates that this area is going to contain my form just so I can clearly separate this content from any other content that might appear on the page. If I save this page now, and at this point you should be able to navigate to this page, so if we go back into the browser and I go back to my Contact Us page, when I click the Save the Turtle tab, it should take me to the Save a Turtle Today page, which it does. So we have the basic content. All we need to do is now build the form. So when you are going to develop a form on a page, you start off with the form element. And the form element is just simply a form tag. So we're going to start out by making a form tag and the form tag has an opening and a closing parameter so it's very similar to other tags that we have. It is possible for you to include multiple forms on a web page but one rule is that you cannot nest forms inside one another. So we're only going to be having one form on this particular page, but it's a good idea to add a couple of attributes to your form element just so that you can specify some other parameters and also to be able to identify the form as a unique form. So one of the most important parameters that you're going to need to include is going to be the action parameter. And the action parameter is usually going to contain a URL or file name or the path of a server-side processing script. This is going to indicate where to send the form information when the form is submitted. Most of the time you'll be using some other sort of scripting language to process the form. 
the server-side processing works with the form data and it sends an email or it writes a text file or it updates a database or it performs some other sort of processing on the server. Most of that type of functionality is outside of the scope of what we're going to be covering here. So we're just going to be creating one of the simplest actions that we can include within a form. And that is to have the information mailed to a specific email address. So this is definitely something that you can do. You can certainly have your form email the information and the information is really similar to an email address you're just going to include inside of the quotes of the action attribute mail to and then you're just going to put colon and it'll pass on your email address so I'll put in my email address and now the form is going to get emailed to me now one little side note in regards to using this is when you send information like this with an email message it is not secure so anytime you're collecting any sort of sensitive information like credit card numbers or social security information or anything that you don't want to just be out there on the web you should not transmit it using email you would want to use some sort of encryption to transmit the data more securely as I mentioned, we will be using this just because this is one of the simplest ways to process the forms, but it certainly is not the most widely used method and definitely something you don't want to do if you're getting any sort of you know, secure information from your user. So that's the first parameter that we need to collect from our user. The next parameter is going to be the method. And the method parameter can get two values either get or post get is the default value and the value of get causes the form data to be appended to the URL and sent to the web server the post method is more private and transmits the form data in the body of the HTTP response and this method is preferred by the W3C I generally use post but it's worth noting that there are those two available so I'm just going to use post in this example the other thing that I like to add to my form is simply an ID and the ID is just a way to uniquely identify this particular form this is an optional attribute but it just provides a unique identifier for the form and just like when we give other things ID names, ID or class names, we just need to make sure there's no spaces and that the value is unique and it's not being used for any other ID value on the same web page document. A lot of times the ID is used by JavaScript or something so that you can hook the form and do something to it. Another optional attribute and value would be the name attribute and name works kind of like ID in which case it's just a name that the form has so that it can be easily accessed by a client-side scripting language like JavaScript and it allows you to edit and verify the form information before the server-side processing is invoked but we're not going to need that in this particular example so you definitely have to have the action that is something that is required and you need to put the method in there. The other two things that I mentioned are optional. Alright, so now that we have our form tag, we're ready to actually start creating some form elements. And we refer to these things as form controls. And form controls are objects that accept information. These types of form controls can include text boxes, scrolling text boxes, select lists, radio buttons, check boxes, and buttons. And with HTML5, we have some new form controls which allow us to customize email addresses, URLs, dates, times, numbers, and even date selections. So there's some really exciting things that you can do with HTML5. In this exercise, we're just going to be covering some of the basics with building a form, not getting into too many of those things, but I will mention a few of them. HTML5 has brought some, some exciting new features, though, to developing forms, so keep that in mind, and you might want to look into that later on if you start developing more sophisticated websites. The form that we're going to build is going to include 
many of the most commonly used form elements. The first one that we're going to be creating is going to be an input field. And an input field is one of the most common fields that you'll be using. We're going to pass on an input field. The input field is a self-closing tag. So I'll just go ahead and close the tag. And then within the input field, I am going to specify what type of input field this is. So the input tag can actually be configured as a variety of elements in a form. But we're going to start off with simply a text box. So I'm just going to set the type here to text. And this is going to create the most simplest form of elements that we'll include within our form. So I'm going to specify that. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pass on a couple of other attributes. So the first thing that I'm going to pass on is going to be a name attribute. And the name attribute is just a way that I can again easily access this particular form element so that the client-side scripting languages like JavaScript or some other server-side processing can hook this particular element and the form name should always be unique so you shouldn't uh, separate that and you should follow most of the other naming conventions that we've talked about as we've been building websites you know don't start off with a numeric character don't use any funky characters there's no spaces so you need to begin with a letter I'm just gonna call this one first name because that's the information that I want to collect Many times when you create a form, you will also assign an ID to the particular form element. And a lot of times the ID is the same as the form name, although it doesn't have to be the same, but many times it is the same. I'm going to use the same name here. So both the ID and the name are going to be first name. Other parameters that we can pass on here are we can pass on value. Value would assign an initial value to the text box that would be displayed within the browser. It can accept information that is typed into the text box. This could also be accessed by, you know, some sort of scripting languages or something like that. So you would just type value and then you would pass on whatever the initial value is going to be. For our form, we're just going to actually leave this information blank, but we are going to include a placeholder which is an HTML5 attribute. This is a new attribute for HTML5 and placeholder is going to just have some brief information that's intended to assist the user with filling out the form. So we'll go ahead and we're just going to type your first name so that the user knows what we are asking them to include here. The other two attributes that we're going to pass on are we are going to pass on the attribute that this is a required field and again this is new with HTML5 that you can pass on the field of required because required is a boolean attribute you don't actually have to make it equal to anything if you just specify required then it is going to make this form field required and the browser is just going to verify that the entry of this information has been created before the form is actually submitted so it's going to be looking for that information. The final attribute that I'm going to pass on is going to be autofocus and autofocus again is an HTML5 attribute and what it does is the browser is going to place the cursor in the form control and set the focus of the form. So this will help when we're tabbing through the form or when the page is just initially loaded. The first input field is going to have focus so you can just start typing right away. So in order to control the form we're going to need to include a submit button. This will allow the user to, when the submit button has been clicked, it's going to trigger the action method on the form element and cause the browser to actually send the form data. So the, the form data that the browser is going to send is it's going to send the name and the value, so it's going to send the name and then the value and the value is going to be whatever the user has entered into our form but it's going to send the name and value pairs for each 
form control element to the web server and then the web server normally is going to invoke some sort of server-side processing program or some sort of script that has been listed in the forms action attribute. Our action attribute is just mail to so when we click submit it's going to send an email to the email address that you've specified up here. We'll just be creating a very simple submit button so I'm going to create a new input field I'm going to set the type to be submit and by setting the type to submit this is just going to configure this as a submit button alternately we could create an input type field which will reset our field and you could do this the same way I'll show you that in just a second and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pass on a couple of other attributes the ID for this is going to be submit and I'm going to set up a name attribute that will also be submit and then I am going to give a value to this one. I'm going to assign a value because I'm going to want my button to actually say something so it's just going to say I'm saving a turtle today and again this is just a self-closing tag so I'll self-close that I am going to copy this input field just so I can show you how a reset button works and we're going to change the type to be reset and I'll just change the ID to have a unique ID name it'll say reset and we'll just change the button to actually say reset alright let's save this and let's test this out in the browser so far so if I come back and I refresh my page in the browser you can see that I have some elements on my page I have this text field which says your first name I have the I'm saving a turtle today and if I click this because we specified that this is required and I'm using a modern browser I'm gonna get this little pop-up that says please fill out this form field so it actually is not gonna let me fill out the form field until I've put some information there and each browser will handle the warning slightly differently this is something that's built into the browser you can customize this with CSS and some other HTML if you wanted to really have absolute control over how it looks but when you're using the HTML5 method of creating your form some of these things are built into the browser and if I type something in here so if I type my name you can see that it actually takes my name if I click the reset button it'll reset the form and just set it back to what it was before or I could type my name and then I could click my submit button and then it's simply going to launch my email program because I have this set up as mail to and you can see that the email address that I put in the action field has been specified and you can see that it's going to send the information now the information is not parsed in a way that's easily readable for us because we are just getting this information in a way that is not super conducive to being handled this way it's going to string the information together so you can see right here it says first name which was the name that we applied to the first input field and then you can say equals Emily so that's what I placed in my text box and then it's going to put an ampersand and then it's going to say submit which is the name of the second field and then that is equal to whatever the value is and you can see I have some I percent 27 that is actually creating the character for the apostrophe that just doesn't render very well so if I didn't want this to be displayed probably what I would ultimately want to do for this particular example is instead of having the value display like this I could just not include a name field here so if I just got rid of the name field on my submit button I saved my form and we refreshed here and I'll just put in a different name here and I'll click submit you can see that now it launches the same email program it's just specifying the first name equal to Dave now if I had other fields they would get strung together so this is not the optimal way to collect the information but this is what we have to deal with when we use the mail to method of accepting that information for our form field we're not going to include a reset button we're not going to we don't need that so we'll just get rid of that and we'll continue to build our form in the next exercise